I am Dr. Kevin Sherrod. I'm the medical director for the Greene County Health Department. I'm also the Greene County coroner and just want to take a minute to thank Health Commissioner Cooper and the entire team here at Montgomery County Public Health, as well as Dr. Harshbarger, who we've worked so closely with over the years in working together to fight this pandemic. As been mentioned here, the situation is, is crucial and the concern is, is that we are facing the calm before the storm. As a practicing physician, we get asked questions every day. And the first question we get asked by our patients and people calling is, what can we do? What can we do? And in answering that question, I remember back as a resident in training at St. Elizabeth's Medical Center many years ago. I had a patient that was a world-class ballroom dancer, and I just marveled at the dance that they were able to perform, he and his partner. And I asked him many times about that. And I'll never forget him telling me one day, he said, young man, never forget this. The greatest performances are the result of basic steps executed well. As we fight this, and I re relate to our patients, we tell them the basic steps, which have been repeated, and I wanna repeat them closely here now. Wash your hands. Wash your hands well. Don't go through the paces, really wash your hands. Avoid any social contact that's not absolutely necessary. If you do not have to go, don't go. If you can go another way, go another way. If you do go out in public, then distance yourself and keep your distance. Again, every contact that you eliminate saves lives, and that cannot be stressed enough. The second question that we get asked frequently is about testing. People want to be tested, and I understand it. And if I had my way and I could do it, we would test everybody because there would be benefits to that. But the reality is, even though we're hearing each and every day, and I'm excited about the prospects of rapid testing and in-office testing, and it is on the horizon, the truth of the matter is, is it's not here yet. And so there are still real limitations on testing. We are limited in our personal protective equipment, which is required every time we test someone, and we're limited by the tests that we have available. So there are guidelines to testing. You can learn those guidelines or publish, or you can talk to your primary care provider about the guidelines, and they can share with you the guidelines on testing. I do anticipate that changing very soon, but as of now, we cannot test everybody. We have to save the tests for the most critical among us and the health department, the health workers among us. For uh, primary care providers and other providers in our community, thank you. You're on the front lines and you're serving, and you're serving well. Our communities are doing a good job. I, I wanna just mirror what Mayor Whaley said, that I, I have been impressed with the response. People are taking this seriously and we're urging you to take it seriously and ask you to continue to do so. If you have questions, reach out. Reach out, there's various ways that you can reach out. The provider networks in our community, and we have excellent healthcare available in our community through our provider networks have all went to telehealth visits and uh, virtual visits where you can reach out to your provider and interact without going to the office. Now certainly we're still seeing people in the office. There's situations that we need to see people in the office. I had patients in the office today. But just as I said a minute ago, if you don't have to go to the doctor's office, reach out to them. And there's other ways that you can connect with your healthcare providers. They're there for you and they're doing a great job. So again, thank you to everyone from Montgomery County. Thank you for the work that you're all doing. And um, we were, are in this together and, and ultimately we will be victorious. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sherritt, especially for sharing that information about the ballroom dancer. For the record, there is a public health employee in the room today who is also a skilled an accomplished ballroom dancer. Let the record also show that it's not me. Uh, my spouse would say I have the flexibility and rhythm of a fire hydrant, so that's not gonna be me. Um, so anyways, thanks for sharing that information. Next, it's my pleasure to represent Melissa Howe, Greene County Health Commissioner, who in every sense of the word is a true leader, not just in her county, but in our region and throughout the state of Ohio. So welcome, Melissa.
Thank you, Jeff. It's a pleasure to be here with you today and talk you through what has been going on in Greene County. Uh, just like Montgomery County, we have been mobilizing our community from the beginning when we first saw those cases in Washington and we knew that this was going to be a big problem. So in Greene County, what we did is we divided up into sectors and made sure that we talked to our physician communities, uh, went to the Greene County Medical Society and made sure that providers knew that this was coming. Um, in Greene County, I want to report that we currently have six cases two hospitalizations, and of those six cases, we had one death. Our fatality was not healthcare facility related, and it was not related to travel. I think that's important to note. So many people are um, pointing fingers and looking to lay blame, and I want to address that as I'm speaking today. Our county commissioners shared with me that they were deeply saddened and devastated to learn of the first death in Greene County from this evil virus. They want everyone to take this seriously and practice social distancing. If everyone stays home and does their part, together we can lessen the impact on Greene County. Please protect your friends and your neighbors by limiting exposure. Currently there's wide, community widespread going on and we are in that acceleration phase as you've heard. We're using a structure known as Area Command. It is a multi-agency, multi-jurisdiction command structure. At the core of this work, though, our purpose is to ensure the health and safety of individuals, our families, our partners, and our community. And we have pre-established relationships with all of those sectors that I was telling you about. And I know Jeff has spoken previously that public health really is this blanket. The public health system is this blanket of protection. And right now, um, it is being stretched thin. But we um, are encouraged by the work that is going on in Greene County. I want to give you an example of that. One would be Josue Solomon um, of Yellow Springs. He's the village manager. Yellow Springs really came together very quickly. And they have coordinated their volunteers for meal delivery. They began searching out resources for estate planning, healthcare powers of attorney, and living wills. They're also sharing information on credit counseling and mental health services. We want to stress personal hygiene too. Prior to visiting the parks and the trails in Greene County, particularly Yellow Springs, because we are well known for our parks and our bike trails, please don't use the trails if you're experiencing any symptoms and be pre prepared for limited access to the parks and trails while we try and encourage people to distance and follow the minimum six foot distance from others. Just like Montgomery County, we will continue to focus on our mission and our message. I wanna shift gears a little bit because I want you to know that public health workers are also first responders. I know many times people think of them as um, police, fire, EMS, our healthcare workers, Next week is National Public Health Week. And I want to tell you about the wonderful public health workers who have been working so hard for the last two and a half months on this long 12 hour days, trying to stand up communities to make sure that they're ready to the best of their ability. We have registrars that do birth and death certificates, registered nurses doing case investigation and contact tracing, we have registered sanitarians handling the license programs and all of those complaints that you're hearing about. We have home visitors. We have early intervention service coordinators. We have office support and IT professionals that help our electronic tracking systems work. Each day, we plan to set aside a day next week to focus on the impact that COVID-19 has had on mental health, maternal and child health, violence prevention, the food industry, education, and let's not forget Dolly Parton is going to be reading to our children through the Imagination Library, persons experiencing homelessness and the business community. Our ask from Greene County is for donations for PPE for the first responder community. You can go to our website, www gcph.info or you can visit us on Facebook and you'll find there are requests for donations for PPE 
to support the efforts of our healthcare facilities and our first responders. And we're making this plea to individuals, to businesses, to our universities, to the tattoo facilities and the salons. We are grateful to the partners that we've made and, and have donated already, including Lowe's and Caring Partners International and local dentists. We also have a plea from our first responders in Greene County. They are planning for increased calls. They are planning for interfacility transfers and personnel absences due to illness. They'll be asking you screening questions, the COVID-19 screening questions when you call in. You should let the dispatchers know if you are having symptoms that you believe are associated with COVID-19. Call 911 when you need it. However, as Dr. Sherritt referred to, individuals with minor health concerns should be calling their health care provider or urgent care. We are trying to avoid delays in those response times too. And we don't want them to have to defer your call. Again, uh, as you heard on the call earlier today, please take time each day to step away from all of this. Step away from the news reports and the latest research discoveries. Stepping away is an act of mercy for yourself and those around you. It will bring peace of mind to your heart and peace to your mind. We all have a choice in the way we respond as individuals and communities. We're coming to these circumstances with different challenges before us. As one Greene County resident told me, the evidence is mounting and no one can deny the seriousness of these infections. We have to set aside our distrust and buckle down at home. Staying home saves lives. We like to say, stay and slay. Stay home, stay apart, slay the virus. Greene County, the Miami Valley, and the state of Ohio will be remembered for our bravery and our resilience. Thank you, Commissioner Howe. We echo your comments about public health workers being first responders as well. We've all recently learned of a health department, local health department in the northwest part of this state that was closed for a set period of time due to COVID illness, 19 illness, as well as just recently learning about another county health department who recently lost a board of health member due to COVID-19 illness. So this virus touches, has the potential to touch all of us and everyone that we care about. All right, next we have Representative Rick Perales from District 73. Well, thank you, Commissioner Cooper, uh, for this gathering. Uh, Mayor Whaley, thank you for bringing everyone together. Uh, Commissioner Howell, thank you for inviting me. Dr. Sherritt, um, as you've already heard, uh, this virus, uh, COVID-19, uh, doesn't see county lines. It doesn't see uh, uh, city lines. This affects us all. And, and that's why I'm so pleased that we're all here together and Green County's here sharing with this. I will tell you that I am a veteran. And uh, we have a lot of veterans out there suffering from this, a lot of homeless veterans. I am informed that in Greene County, and I'm sure similar in Montgomery County, there are four homeless shelters and they're all in jeopardy of being closed because we don't have the volunteers. Um, you know, yesterday was uh, Vietnam Veterans Day. Uh, our vets, uh, Vietnam vets, that uh, certainly weren't welcome back home after their endeavor, um, not like other uh, uh, time frames. And uh, many of these homeless vets are Vietnam vets. We need to step up and support them and the other homeless folks there. Uh, I am told that if you contact the Greene County Health Department, they can try to match the skills with the needs and I'm sure Montgomery County will do the same so that we can keep this resource open to these folks, keep these folks safe and the people that they contact safe. It's very important. We've got to take care of those that have fought for us. Uh, it's, a, it's that simple. I, will, I would like to address one other issue that has been brought up, Mayor Whaley talked about, unemployment and employment and your workers. Uh, from the state perspective, I will tell you there's a lot of confusion. Uh, uh, I will tell you that the governor, Governor DeWine, uh, Lieutenant Governor uh, Houston, are, they're doing a wonderful job with their staff to get the word out, but it's still difficult. The lines are busy, it's hard to get through. Um, one thing that everyone needs to understand is that we are, are waiting on how the feds 
roll everything down to figure out what we can best do to support the employers and employees in the state. But the one difference everyone has to understand between the feds and the state is we have to have a balanced budget. This, the, the feds can make money. They can do whatever they want to make it happen. Uh, right now, we have about $2.7 billion in our rainy fund in the state. Um, we're projecting that it's gonna take well over 2 million of that to get through the next year, this year, just on Medicaid and unemployment. So we have to figure out how we can use the rest of that money to best satisfy what the people of Ohio need. So keep that in mind as you talk to people. And, and I guess last, what I'd like to leave you with is we work for you folks. We were elected by you folks. We work for you folks. If you have a question, you need to talk to your state senator, your state representative. Uh, you need to contact them. You need to tell them what it is. You need to write it down. And you need to get answers from them working up through. Same with your um, township trustees, with your uh, city mayors and everyone. We work for you folks. We're here for you. You need to use us to make sure you get the accurate information you need to make good decisions and to plan what's gonna go on because, yeah, we've moved this out until the end of April, but who knows how truly how long this is gonna go. We have to be prepared for anything that's out there and your legislators and your elected officials should be there. They need to be there to support you in this endeavor. So please reach out to them. I know that my colleagues at the in Columbus, both in the Senate side and the House side, are eager to do whatever we can do to find out what we can do to help you folks. So again, I, I thank all the people in this room and, and just the diversity. I think Mayor Whaley and I are the only two elected officials here. Everyone else is, is health, as it should be, but we're all working together to make this situation better, get through it, and get on the other side. And, and uh, I'm convinced we're gonna be stronger and better once we get on the other side. So thank you all very much.